Hi there. Welcome to another episode with the Nairobi Hospital. What do you know of rheumatoid arthritis? Who does it affect? Follow me and let's get informed. So welcome back guys. We are now joined by Dr. Peter Lemayan, who is a consultant orthopedic and trauma surgeon at the Nairobi Hospital. So tell us, Dr. Ari, what in layman's terms is rheumatoid arthritis? Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic condition yes. which uh, occurs as a result of your body reacting against its own joints. This is where your immune system, uh, for one reason or another, targets your joints but as you will see uh, not only the joints are affected in fact we have what we call extra articular manifestations of this disease where other parts of the body can be affected besides the joints there yes. are mainly three types mm -hmm. we have one we call a uh, uh, seropositive rheumatoid arthritis where the body produces antibodies and it's these antibodies that are directed uh, to, to the joints. causing destruction within the joints. Mm -hmm. Then we have seronegative. Uh, the seronegative type is where the patient presents actually with features of rheumatoid arthritis, but when you test for these antibodies in the blood, it's not there. But it's actually a type of rheumatoid arthritis. These two are seen in adults. They are what we call adult onset rheumatoid arthritis. Then we have one which we see in young people below the age of 16 years, we call juvenile idiopathic rheumatoid arthritis. When I say idiopathic, again, in scientific terms, we are basically saying we don't know what causes it. Right. But we see it in people who are juveniles at 16 years and below. Yes. So it's safe to say we, we don't know what causes rheumatoid arthritis. Indeed, we don't. This is a, a, a model of a knee joint. Mm -hmm. This is the upper bone, this, these two are the lower bones, and this is the joint. Now, surrounding your joint are structures here we call ligaments. This is a tendon, all right? This is the patella. Now, we have structures inside the joint, but all these things need to be covered by an envelope, what we call a synovial layer. Yes. Now that synovial layer is the one that produces fluid that causes lubrication within the joint so that this bone and this one do not rub onto each other. Mm -hmm. Now it is that layer we call the synovium that is targeted uh, by these antibodies, antibodies. Uh, produced by your own body. And progressively, it might start slowly, but progressively across weeks, months, or years, the destruction progresses now to involve the other surrounding structures. How do we see rheumatoid arthritis presenting itself? They vary with intensity, they vary with uh, periodicity. And commonly this condition, especially the adult onset, mm -hmm. is said to be, to be symmetric. Meaning if it affects joints on one hand, it will affect joints on the mm -hmm. other hand. Now, the joints initially will be warm, they will be tender, that is painful, they will be swollen. And in somebody who is, uh, you know, slightly brown in color, the joints will tend to be red. For one reason or another, it tends to spare these furthest joints. But now, these other joints and the wrist joint, they are commonly affected. And if it affects one side, it will also affect, affect the other. other. Progressively, these people will have problems waking up in the morning because they suffer from what we call morning stiffness. And this may last for a few hours until it becomes warm before the joints uh, loosen up. Buttoning of your shirt becomes a problem because that dexterity is lost. The ability to fold your fingers and mm. just get hold, mm. get hold of mm. the button becomes a problem. Progressively, as destruction goes on in these joints, mm. they start having deformities. And the deformities we see is very classical. For the rest in adults, we will have something we call ulnar deviation, where the fingers will actually deviate towards ah, that direction. Yes, yes. All right? Yes. And the wrist will actually deviate on this other side. Mm. Then if you look at this joint, it tends to be hyper-extended. And then these other joints 
goes into that position. Mm. And then these other ones which are not affected straighten out. Mm. Now, those deformities, we call them botonia defect or deformity or swan neck deformity. So that is very classical right. of a rheumatoid arthritis. arthritis. In fact, in the very severe forms, even these bones of the wrist joint, we call the couple bones because there are very many of them, they dislocate. Mm -hmm. The swelling in osteoarthritis, which we relate either with old God. people or injuries, tends to be hard in nature. That's but it. in rheumatoid arthritis, the joints are swollen, but it's actually boggy. Mm. It is softer. Mm. It will affect your ankle joints, toes, mm. knees, your hip. hip joints, yes, and even the elbow and the shoulder. Mm. Actually, you can have things we call rheumatoid nodules especially on the extensor surfaces, on the parts mm -hmm. where you extend like your limb, your hand. Mm -hmm. So on this part, mm -hmm. you end up with nodules on the skin surface. Ah, they look like round... Yes, some round bumps. swellings, bumps. Yes. Those same bumps can actually be found in other organs within the body. Mm -hmm. It can go to the heart, it can go to the blood vessels, it can go to the lungs. Now, if you have these nodules going to the heart, you can actually end up with a heart attack, something we call a myocardial infarction. Mm -hmm. If this thing goes to your small blood vessels, commonly like the small blood vessels under the nail beds, mm -hmm. you can end up with things we call infarcts. So under the nail beds, you see some small punctate uh, appearance, mm -hmm. things which appear just below your nail beds. This condition, again, for one reason or another, tends to affect women more than men. We don't know why. Okay. So mm -hmm. from around 40 years to around 60 years of age. But it can actually affect any age, it can affect any sex, it can affect any race. Mm -hmm. But we see it much more commonly in women yeah. from around 40 years of age to 60 years of age. How do you go about treating it or managing it? Management of rheumatoid arthritis is multidisciplinary. So there is a role of an orthopedic surgeon like myself. There is a role of a physiotherapist, mm -hmm. a psychologist or a psychiatrist to counsel these people, especially now yes. when they get depression and so on. You know, scientists have come up with another group of drugs they call biologics, which targets a specific part of the immune response, mm -hmm. where now the, the rheumatoid arthritis comes up so that you minimize the side effects of the other. So the first thing is control the pain. Physiotherapy will try to relieve the pain using physical exercises. But once now they start seeing that joint destruction is happening, a lot of deformity is occurring. The, the knee joint is looking that side, mm -hmm. the, the ankle joint is looking that side, they can refer them to us. And that's where now surgery comes in. So assume if destruction has happened within the joint and the joint is totally destroyed, then what we do, we shave off that joint mm -hmm. and we replace that joint with metal implants. This is what we call a joint replacement. This can be done around and we've been doing it for many, many years. Mm -hmm. All right. Still in terms of management, there are those things we advise the patients to do themselves at home. So mm -hmm. some of these exercises include yoga, cycling, swimming, and then, you know, some like these Chinese exercises they call Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. Tai Chi. Right. Tai Chi, yes. something like that. Yes, yes. Some patients find them mm. to be helpful. Mm -hmm. We don't have a food that you eat and it prevents this condition or protects you entirely. Mm -hmm. But we know from studies that there are some foods, for instance, which reduce inflammation mm -hmm. in your body. Mm -hmm. Fish, like salmon or tuna, is quite rich in what we call uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, vegetables like spinach, groundnuts, mm. uh, broccoli, uh, tea. Tea is rich in some components that reduce oxidation in your body, especially the green teas. Is that to say that there is no cure for rheumatoid arthritis? Good. Uh, for sure, there is no cure for rheumatoid arthritis. Are there some, for some people, it will get to a certain stage and it stops to progress? Now, that's a good question. There are three clinical spectrums. Mm -hmm. There is a group of patients, especially the seronegative type. If right. you remember, I gave you three types, yes. seropositive, seronegative, and the juvenile. Mm -hmm. For the seronegative, where they don't produce antibodies, 
we see in about 10% of them that in about six months, when they get this condition, in about six months, actually the disease may disappear spontaneously. Mm -hmm. So you have patients where they go between flaring up and remission. And across many months, years down the line, they now end up with you know, the serious complications where we are talking about the deformities and so on. How common in Kenya would you say rheumatoid arthritis is? Literature states that at least one to two percent of the populations, I'm talking about the West, yes. one to two percent of their populations actually are affected by this condition. Mm -hmm. The few studies that have been done here and especially by the, the, the local rheumatologists are almost getting similar uh, prevalences. Mm -hmm. So we are assuming also in our setup at least one to two percent of our population possibly is affected by rheumatoid. You can imagine if we are people of 45 million, at least half a million of our comrades are affected by this condition. Mm -hmm. Would you say that the Nairobi hospital is equipped to handle rheumatoid arthritis on whatever certainly, level? Certainly, yes. certainly, certainly. This condition is very, I said it's treatable but not curable. It's not curable. We have all the specialists have elucidated in the earlier, uh, you know, discussion. We have one of the only two hydrotherapies in the Republic. We do uh, joint replacements here. Yeah. Our lab is one of the best equipped in Sub-Saharan Africa. We are able to test virtually any of those antibodies I was telling you about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yes, this is a condition as in Nairobi Hospital we can manage and we manage it on an everyday basis. Okay. I was told that if I click my fingers, <laughs> then there's a chance that I'll get some form of arthritis yeah. and it's not good for you. Other people say it's good because you're releasing air bubbles. You know, how do I, I just, I'm trying to make sure that I, yeah. I stay in the safe mm. zone. These are means. There is no clear association between you snapping your fingers mm -hmm. and you getting rheumatoid arthritis. We've clearly said this is an autoimmune condition. It's your body reacting against the joint. It's not the act of you snapping so. your finger that causes it. Are there any things we can do to say this is a preventative preventative action? All right. Yeah. We don't know what causes rheumatoid arthritis, but we think it's an abnormal uh, reaction of the immune system. But science has found out that there are some things that actually tend to increase risks for you to get that condition. Mm -hmm. We've said one, being female, in itself is a risk factor. I'm sorry to say this, yes. but that, it's in the books. Could be the hormones. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Family history of rheumatoid arthritis. Mm. Cigarette smoking. Mm. Obesity. Previous injury around a joint. Mm -hmm. Again, I would say it's difficult to totally prevent, but we have those modifiable factors. You cannot modify uh, being female but you can modify being in an environment where they smoke. Or if you yourself you smoke and you stop, you reduce your risks. All right, so that wraps up our health check with the Nairobi Hospital. This was um, Dr. Peter Lemayan. He's a consultant, orthopedic and trauma surgeon with the Nairobi Hospital. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank you.